Greg, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. It's an absolute pleasure. I mean, what an incredible event. I know they've worked so hard on it, and well, it's brilliant. And you know what? We're having this conversation against the backdrop of an energy crisis. I mean, where are we in the world right now? Situation. We're probably bang in the middle of the energy crisis, certainly in Europe and uh, you know some other areas. But you know what we're seeing at the moment is uh, people talk about gas prices have, have start to soften, but they're still three or four times the normal. Um, it takes a number of years to rewire global supply chains. It's, it's really a rerun of what we saw in 1973 uh, when uh, you know the oil exactly yeah. And, and, and again, what we saw there was the reaction was energy efficiency. We've seen a 15% reduction in gas demand in Europe. Um, people looking at alternative sources, so bringing gas in from uh, places other than Russia. Uh, an increased focus on energy security at a national level. So in 1973, the US decided it would never be dependent on the rest of the world. And certainly Europe is beginning to look more at national security. And then finally, alternative sources of energy. You know, a, a, a real doubling down now on the move to for example, electrification, especially through renewables. So this is history repeating itself, but in a more profound way. Yeah, in 1973, what you didn't have was the next generation of energy. Uh, you had some switch, for example, from oil to gas. But here we're also seeing you know, the advent of renewables, which even before the crisis, were obviously a, a huge area of growth because uh, of the climate imperative and also because they're increasingly cheaper. Uh, the crisis has really caused this doubling down then on, on the uh, development of renewables. So what can we do in response beyond yeah. talking about it and identifying yeah. the problems? So in the very short term, there are two things we need to do. You know, one is energy efficiency, uh, and, and that can both mean uh, using less energy and using it more wisely. Uh, in the uh, short term as well, we need to look after the energy consumers of the countries that are most affected. Uh, the reality is that means government support. And we need to do that because otherwise we're going to see even worse economic impacts across the economies and, and, and it's going to be even harder to, to grow out of COVID. In the medium term, we can deploy renewables very, very quickly. Now, there are a lot of constraints. Interesting, there's an enormous amount of investment uh, appetite in the world, but grids are not typically set up to take on this kind of pace of change. So governments are going to need to get involved and make that more agile. But the private sector is here to drive that new generation. So given that, what do you see as the role, for example, of countries like the UAE in the global transition? Because clearly they are at the centre of this. I'm here in the UAE uh, partly because you know, we're going to have COP here later in the year. You know, the UAE is the very centre now of the focus on sustainability. But you know, even before that, I've been hugely impressed by the leadership shown here. Uh, the UAE are putting pressure on governments in Europe, for example, in the UK, to show they're serious about renewables. Now, you know, that kind of leadership is what we need to drive this change. So I think the UAE is, is, is the centre of the opportunity now to drive change faster, certainly in, in, in Europe and other parts of the world. So how can Octopus be part of that? Because clearly you're here for a reason. You're not just watching what's going on. What ambitions do you have in relation to the UAE and what it's trying to achieve going forward? Yes, Octopus has got some fantastic partnerships around the world, really to deploy the technology that enables consumers and businesses to benefit from renewables faster and cheaper. Uh, we've got partnerships in Japan, in the USA, in Australia, uh, in uh, several European countries in the UK. But across the Middle East and North Africa, we really want now to deploy investment in the technologies, in the people, uh, artificial intelligence, software, digitalization, consumerization that will enable electric vehicle batteries, uh, uh, thermal control systems to maximize their use of renewables when they're abundant so we get the cheapest power we've ever had. Okay, well, good luck. It's a big vision. Thank you, Julia. And I've got to say, if there's anywhere that we can talk about this, where people have got the same vision, it's right here. Okay, he wants to talk. Get that? He wants to talk. Greg, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Greg Jackson. Greg is the founder and CEO of the Octopus Energy Group.